way is by activating this other pathway that's really, really um, awesome. And it's called FOX03. And it's a little heavy. I don't want to get too technical here, but too late. It's kind of cool because this <laughs> FOX03 gets activated by exercise, it gets activated by heat. And what it does is it like, it activates this whole host of genes, genes that are like glutathione, antioxidant genes. It activates genes that are involved in repairing damage to your DNA, which can lead to cancer. It repairs damage to your entire cell, which can lead to the cell dying. And if that happens in your stem cells, your stem cell pools go down. So FOXO3, it's doing so much. And FOXO3, I've actually worked um, with it in worms, some of the early research I did in aging. Um, we could take a worm and make it always have it by genetically engineering it. We could make it always have an active FOXO3. And these worms live between 50 to 100% longer. So the worm lifespan is usually around 15 days, but we, it could live to a maximum of 30 days when you have it always having this FOXO3 active. And humans that actually have a variation in this gene. So variations in genes are what makes us all different, right? So we all have different variations of genes. And um, if they happen in a percentage of the population that's more than 1%, it's, it's called a polymorphism because it's not just random mutation. Well, this FOXO3 is a polymorphism because quite a bit of the you know, percentage of the population has a form of it that has it active a lot. And those people that have it have a 2.7-fold increased chance of living to be 100. And what happens is people that have this often are they're able to handle stress better. So they're able to, for example, you've heard of people that are like 100 and they've smoked cigarettes. And you're like, how have you smoked cigarettes for 50 years and lived to be 100? Like, what's going on there? Well, oftentimes people have this, this overactive FOXO3 where they can handle the smoking stress. They can handle, you know, drinking a lot. They can handle just a poor lifestyle because they're able to detoxify things. They're able to clean up the mess, you know, get the damage out. And so it's not accumulating and doing all this bad stuff. So sauna activates that. Um, and I think, and I'm totally speculating here, this wasn't shown in the paper. It was, the paper was uh, an associative study. So it basically looked at these about 2000 men that were using the sauna and, and then said, okay, well, in a dose-dependent manner, meaning the more often they use the sauna, the less likely they were to die of cardiovascular diseases. Pick your, you know, your choice of, you know, heart attacks, coronary, coronary artery disease, coronary heart disease, atherosclerosis, et cetera, et cetera, cancer. So these were all down in men that use the sauna more frequently. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool, and I really think part of that is that hormetic response where you're stressing your body with heat to activate these heat shock proteins or FOXO3 and other things that are then active for a longer period of time and help you deal with stress, with the stress of aging, that, you know, with the stress of breathing in oxygen, you know, which does a lot of damage, just breathing in oxygen, you know, in the way we make energy, we use oxygen and we eat food and that's coupled to make energy and that process uh, generates damage just as a metabolic, you know, byproduct. So I think that's, that's really cool that the sauna is able to activate those really important genetic pathways. 